Okay guys, now I'm going to try to make one of these little fermentation chiller controllers. And uh, the reason why, well I built the, uh, I've dry fitted together my styrofoam box for my fermentation chiller and I set just some bottles of ice in the chiller with my fermenter. And I found that the cold just seems to sit there, it doesn't, doesn't actually chill the fermenter. So I'm going with a concept that I've seen other people do and I'll put a link to a guy who has an excellent fermentation chiller on YouTube. I'll put a link to his video down here in the comments of this video. But um, so I couldn't find the thermostat that everybody seemed to be using uh, so I just picked this up at Walmart and I think we'll see if I can make it work. Okay so open in the box here it's uh if this is the hunter 42995 and it comes with instructions and things but what i didn't see in the box were schematics so i'm just going to wing it okay so the first thing we want to do is get this case off should come apart something like this i haven't seen anybody on the internet using one of these for a fermentation chiller yet so I'm jumping into a little bit of the inky black, but that's sort of like me anyway. Looking at this, ah, I see. I see RT1 up there. Let's see, can I show you that? Can you see RT1? That looks to me RT1. R would be for resistor, T would be for temperature, so I say that's the thermistor. So I'm going to take this apart. I see some screws have a little arrow to them and some screws don't. So let's remove all the screws that have a little arrow to them. Let's see if that gets us where we want to go. My goal here is to get that little thermistor, that little temperature sensor, little temperature probe, and put it on a longer piece of wire so that it can go down inside my styrofoam fermentation chiller. these guys with the battery hooks I see okay so now that we have this I want to remove that little RT1 carefully and get some longer wires on it So we can take off its little cage. There we go. So let's see if we can desolder these connections. Got my little desoldering wick. And this soldering iron is probably way too big for this, so I'm going to have to be very gentle to not mess it up. Okay, that should be very, very easy to get out of those holes now. Famous last words. Oh, it just fell right out. I didn't have to put more heat on it, good. So there's our itty teeny tiny thermistor. So now I'm going to take some old telephone line <laughs> from the bygone days. Let's see, how much would I want on here? And I got to remember that, well, this is solid copper wire, but um, links of copper will add a, a um, some resistance. It does change the characteristics somewhat, but it shouldn't change them enough to matter in this instance. My little clippers are getting old and they don't mate up very well anymore. I know, tell me about wire strippers guys. I've got a, like four sets somewhere around here. This has been one of those days. I'll strip a little bit of this off. Let's get a piece of this heat shrink.
Yeah, about this much should do. I'm gonna put this little green sleeving over these wires. Let's see what we got. Looking good. So we have our little thermistor onto the wires. So uh, now I'm going to slide up on my heat shrink. Let's see how shrinky we can get it. Can we get shrinky with it? I don't use a heat gun. I use my soldering iron. Oh, well, let's hope that's and good let's enough. Let's go back to the other end of this. Now we're going to solder the red and black wires on where the thermistor was. Okay, so now we want it right in here. And it doesn't matter which way it goes, there is no polarity, no. So that's done then. I'm gonna take my soldering iron, I'm gonna burn a hole. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to tie a knot in it so that I can provide some strain relief. <laughs> Pretty big knot, but she'll get the job done. Now for my fan portion, I'm going to power it with this little 12 volt adapter. I don't even remember what this went to. It's been sitting in the drawer for <laughs> who knows. Okay, that's good. We're getting kill ohms to the tip, so we're good. So now we know that the side with the writing on it is indeed the positive, and we can cut it off. And skin it. Well, now we take the little computer fan. Okay, and so now what I want to do, I got my little wire stripped, and I want to take the grounds, so that'll be the one on here without the writing, and put them together. So now I'm going to connect the positive from the converter to RH. We're, we're going to kick, connect the positive from the fan to G. Okay, so here I'm putting in the last screw. You get to see all the excitement of me putting in the last screw. Done. Oh, if I can mash my big knot down fine enough. Okay, so here we have some batteries, and now we need to plug in our fan. So here's the little fan, and here's the thermostat. The thermostat's powered by batteries. Our fan's powered by that little 12 volt regulator. Here's our thermistor. So now let's just prove our, do our proof of concept and see if I just turn the fan on, will the fan come on? Yay, success! It comes on. Okay, so oh, it's showing me a low battery light. <laughs> um, let's put the fan on auto. It says the temperature 77. So let's put this on cool. Oh, and there it came on. Let's um, set temperature 68. Let's put the temp up here at like 85 and see if the the fan goes off. So this does work. So now I can extend the wire into my fermentation chiller. 
So uh, uh, that's the next step. So later, guys. <laughs>